did a video that was the blind or visually impaired YouTuber tag. Well, I'm going to be kind of doing a part two to that video in doing the visually impaired blind YouTuber beauty tag. So these questions are all in the realm of beauty and things like that. So I actually haven't looked over the questions at all. So we're going to be answering these here on the fly. So what is the hardest makeup product to apply as a person who is blind or visually impaired? For me, I would say there's two makeup products that I just have not been able to quite master or figure out how to do being visually impaired. And the first would be eyeliner. It's really hard for me to do, uh, especially like on my upper lid, it's hard for me to be able to see if I'm applying a straight line, if it's, you know, even, and if there's any patches or anything like that. So I really struggle with eyeliner, and I also really struggle to use any kind of brow product because, again, that just it's more detail oriented, more precision based, and therefore I struggle. So, number two is what is your number one tip for shopping? with vision loss. My number one tip would be, my number one tip would be to already know what it is that you're looking for. I find it way easier to find things if I already know what it looks like. And so, I mean, a lot of what I tend to go out and buy are things that I've seen recommended by beauty YouTubers or um, just on the internet somewhere and so if I go in and I know the brand, I know what the packaging looks like, that really helps me find what I'm looking for and if I am just kind of browsing and just looking around, um, having a buddy with me, whether it's my sisters or a friend or whomever, it really helps because they can help explain to me what things are if I pick something up. A lot of times the font is very, very small and I can't read it, so sometimes I don't know. Is this a primer? Is it a foundation? Is it a tinted moisturizer? Like, what is this? And then I'll just ask someone and it tends to work out really well that way. Okay, so number three, what is one beauty item you stay away from out of vision loss? Um, for me, that would really be, well, I feel like I have tried. I have tried to give everything a fair go, and I've tried my best to learn how to use things in an accommodating way, but I've pretty much given up on eyeliner unless it's just putting it in the waterline, and I have pretty much don't do anything with my brows. And I also, one thing that I definitely never tried and will stay away from are false eyelashes because again, A, putting anything near my eyes, my eyes are really sensitive and they tend to water if they get irritated and so I worry about that. And then also, again, you just have to be very precise and I've, I've never attempted it, maybe, just maybe I could do it, but it's just thing I've just stayed away from because mascara works just fine. Number four, what tips would you give to a young girl struggling with vision loss who wants to get into makeup? For me, I would say for a very, very long time, I didn't even try to do many things when it came to makeup regarding eyeshadow, regarding even just using bronzer and highlighter and blush. And my makeup routine was very, very simple when I started using it. and. I learned that, you know, I'm actually more capable of doing my makeup than I thought it was. And don't get me wrong, I've had some makeup fails, many a makeup fails, but I think just remembering that, like, it's not the worst thing to go out in public with some, with your foundation not matching or with something not blended out perfectly. Whether you are fully able to see a perfect vision or you're visually impaired, everybody probably has gone out with, you know, mascara on their eyelids, with something not blended. I mean, your foundation not matching your neck is a universal problem that a lot of people face who like to wear makeup. And so I wouldn't say that, you know, some of these problems aren't a result of being visually impaired, although it does make it a little bit harder to navigate the whole makeup scene when you are visually impaired. So 
the things that have helped me the most are just watching makeup beauty youtubers and seeing how they do their makeup and kind of learning from their techniques and eventually I feel like I've just grown in in knowing what products work well for me knowing what types of looks I can do well that are a little bit more foolproof and starting there and kind of growing in that technique and then you know adding in some more technique to my makeup routine has kind of evolved over time but again I'm not by any means a beauty guru I'm really not I'm pretty average when it comes to makeup but I've definitely grown so much over the past few years and a lot of that just came from feeling more empowered within myself to take more risks, try new things and more products and learning that I'm not as held back as I think I am when it comes to makeup just because I am visually impaired. Number six is what is one thing you think every girl should be able to do without looking? When it comes to doing your sort of five minute makeup routine, you should be able to put on whether it's a thin layer of foundation or just some concealer, maybe some bronzer, some mascara, some chapstick, like just the some very basic things to get out the door but still have a little bit of makeup on. I think that you should have a very basic makeup routine that you can do without looking that you know is pretty foolproof that you could just like apply this here, apply that there and run out the door and that it is good to go. Number seven, do you think not being able to see yourself affects your self-confidence? I will say definitely it does. I am fortunate that I'm still able to see myself fairly well, but not being able to see myself in the detailed way that other people see me has caused me to be more insecure because even when I do put on a full face of makeup and I think like I don't notice any major mistakes and I think it's all blended I'm very insecure about is there something that I'm just not seeing am I missing something like are people gonna look at me and be like oh my gosh you did your makeup like you know did you do your makeup in the dark and you're thinking like well I mean, kind of like that there's an element where we're always sort of in the dark I guess and so um, even when it comes to getting dressed you know I am always second-guessing if things match if things go together and I annoy my friends and family because you know today I'm wearing a black sweater and black jeans and you know if I was going to put on some shoes I'd probably wear like a black boot like very basic anyone could tell you that that will probably match and I'm the person who will ask like does this look okay should I change are these boots okay are these does the sweater look good with these jeans like I overthink a lot because I don't trust myself and I've had to learn to trust myself more and trust my own instincts and my own opinions and you know the more the more I've gotten into makeup and even fashion to an extent and the more I failed the more now I know what to look for when it comes to okay is this blended because I remember this day it wasn't and this is what I saw and I have a larger frame of reference about what my skin looks like when everything looks good and what my skin looks like when things don't look good and I think that's helped and more experience definitely helps you build your self-trust which in turn builds your self-confidence. Number eight, name one thing you need to help with when it comes to makeup or fashion. So the main things that I always ask for help with are any type of thing with my eyebrow, any eyeshadow, eyeliner, or lip colors because especially if I'm trying out a new lipstick, I don't always know if the color suits me and I can't always tell if it's smudged a little bit or if, you know, just little things like that that I always like to get a second opinion on. Number nine, what is a blind girl beauty or fashion essential? When it comes to fashion, I would say the essentials are any kind of neutral, basic type of piece things that are really easy to throw on and match like a black sweater and black jeans and black boots like you just can't go wrong and you look put together and it's just easy um with makeup i would say that a good mirror and good lighting can make a huge difference and that whether 
it's just a mirror that I can hold that's large enough but still easy enough to hold close enough to my face where I can really try to examine the situation, a magnifying mirror, all of those things definitely help when it comes to beauty. Number 10, what is the best part about applying makeup as a person with vision loss? And I honestly think that the best part is just that despite having vision loss, it's still something that we can do. And I find a lot of empowerment and confidence as I've learned that over the years. And as I've learned like, wait a second, like I'm actually not exempt from being able to participate in enjoying makeup and enjoying beauty and fashion just because of my vision loss. And I think that's the best part is that it's something that we still get to do and still get to have our own individual unique styles with and we aren't you know, we're not missing out just because of the fact that we are visually impaired. Number 11, have you ever experienced any major fashion or makeup disasters in the past that are out of having vision loss? Definitely have, um, especially when it comes to makeup. When I first started using makeup, I was also just so inexperienced, like I just didn't know what a makeup routine was I didn't know the you know I didn't use uh, many products that I use now and so my makeup routine was very small and um, it's definitely caused for a lot of fails over the years I would say that the main thing is for a while I pretty much always left the house with mascara marks on my eyelids and that's something that I've gotten better at. Um, also, I, I don't tend to get as much mascara on my eyelids anymore, but if I do, I tend to be better at wiping it away. Um, definitely had the striped highlighter and bronzer um, and have gotten better over the years with blending it all together, making it look more natural. And um, I've had many, many, many uh, lipstick fails. I mean, even this trip isn't necessarily due to vision loss, but even this past Thanksgiving, I was wearing a bold bright red lipstick and while we were eating, it started to smudge on my face. So my sister was like, oh, your makeup's starting to smudge. So I was just like taking a napkin, trying to like wipe the edges. And then before I knew it, I just had red smeared everywhere and had to literally leave the table and go. And I had to use a makeup wipe to completely wipe away the lipstick and then I kind of just like touched up my foundation and things but um, like you know that was just a few weeks ago so I'm constantly encountering makeup fails whether it's because I'm visually impaired or just because I I took too far of a risk with that lipstick that day but definitely have and I'm sure I will continue to. Number 12. Do you ever have people commenting that you don't look blind or visually impaired. I wouldn't say, I don't know that I've ever heard that phrase, like you don't look blind, you don't look visually impaired, but I would definitely have experienced people not knowing because of the fact that I don't have many dead giveaways. I don't use a cane, I don't use a guide dog. And so then when people see me holding my phone really close to my face or me getting really close to my computer screen um, or asking what seem to be very basic questions of like, is this a quarter or is this a nickel? Like just clarification questions like that. I've gotten some weird looks or some comments of like, like, are you blind? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I am. And then they feel bad and they're like, oh, sorry, my bad, I didn't know. And you know, it's not their fault, they didn't know. Um, but I have definitely encountered, and a lot of my friends will even be like, I would have no idea that you are visually impaired because of how well I, I get through life, I get through my day without needing a huge amount of accommodations. But especially over the past few years, I think it has my vision has gotten worse and so it's gotten more obvious to people that I am visually impaired and that this is something I have to deal with and, and I have to work through every single day and fight to overcome the obstacles that are, you know, that come with living in a world that is suited for people with perfect vision and um, I think people are starting to realize just 
more of my limitations now that I do have more of them. So, you know, um, I don't know if I've heard people specifically say that, but I've definitely encountered situations that made it clear that people did not know I was visually impaired because I don't look it. Number 13, do you use any pieces of assistive technology or apps to help you when putting outfits together or clothing or, or doing your makeup? Um, not really. I really don't use any assistive technology. I don't use any apps. Um, if anything, I just use magnifying mirrors, but I don't even use them that often and currently I actually don't even have one so that would be the only thing that I have used in the past but I also think that's pretty common for people even with perfect vision so fortunately I don't have to use any assistive technology or anything at the moment I'm not even sure of what's all out there so it might be something I'll look into but I I luckily can just, you know, use my friends and family to assist me and that's about that. There you go, that is the blind girl beauty tag. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please leave a comment, start some conversation, and I will see you guys tomorrow.